This is Jack Tankshaw, and I'm going to break down my finish of Aaron Phillips. So the Superman, basically, the, the, the reason he threw the Superman was because I put him in a, a bit of a mauling in the first round, so he knew he had to come for pressure on me, but obviously you put too much pressure, that opens up the takedown. So because I put him on the back foot straight away, he didn't want to back up to the cage when you're know, just going to rush him and rag him down on the cage. So I think he threw the Superman to try and back me up yeah. to create a bit of space. But also I'm thinking take that anyway, just, just because of how successful the first round is. I haven't even power doubled. I basically, as he's thrown it, I've dropped, bang, you. Yeah. Now, because he's so overextended, I haven't even had to get up on my feet and drive. Because he's come over me so much, I think it was, I even cut it this way, but, so as he's gone, and I've just literally cut and just circled him down to the floor. So as he's thrown it, I've gone, bang, there. And we've ended up in this sort of position, obviously, towards the cage. So we've ended up you. If I was to just sit this game and try and pass, especially on the fence, he's going to start shimmying up. So straight away, I had to get my weight over him. If I sit back here, he was decent ground inside, he's going to start shimmying up, up the cage, or he's going to start setting up attack. So straight away, I bring my weight over him here. Neutralizes his hips, triangles and arm bars. And you try and climb up the cage now. I'm on top. For him to climb the cage, exactly what you've got to start isolating things, which is where I like to start coming down. Coming down. Now after a couple of them, he opens his guard and goes scissors, eh? Which is a natural defense. Does that to push me off, create a bit of space to go up. Now I know he's gonna do that, that's why I'm every year straight away. Naturally, sounds a bit uh, discriminating by saying the Americans naturally go rest on one straight away. In rest, it don't matter if you give you back. So straight away he goes there. Now once he goes here, I don't even think you go that far. He's still down. So I know he's gonna go for the back, he's gonna go to get up. And he's just sits this up in you. What a lot of people worry about is obviously as soon as, as soon as you attack a rear naked choke, they go two to one straight away. Now what I do is a little bit different is rather than like seriously fret with that, I'll come across the face. Because I know as soon as he goes two to one, I can lift and slide that in. Now if I go deep on the neck, keep your chin down and attack the two to one. If I try and feed this now, it's sort of stuck on the face. Whereas if I go a little bit loose there, he fights it, I can lift. And once that's through, the cage helps me now. Because I straight away locked it up, I lent. I think I even went, may have gone there. And even without the, like, I think he was more so, he was even more on his, on his side there. But because of that, I knew it was on. I could do him shouting, keep it on, keep it on. There, bang. So again, I'm here, wrap him up, make him worried. As soon as he starts to, and that's exactly what he did, I think, he went on his elbows. He goes, you. And as soon as he goes to the one, lift. So it's almost like a lift up, if that makes sense. Mm. Rather than like I just lift the head, I'll just fret you as you attack my arm. Lift up, you lean over, and finish it. A lot of the time when I go straight in, you assume they're gonna tuck their chin, but I know I crank well my hips, I know how to get a neck mm. crank on. So I always go short for the cranks. I know you crank on and eventually they give the neck up, yeah. and then the minute they give the Slip neck, and I know it's on. I go here. Sometimes with a crank, it's easier to go short because if you crank and they start to fight the hands, it's easy to switch it back the other way. Switch it back the way. If you're you and they get a good, good, good berry on the chin, yeah. you're sort of stuck in that position. So I go you. If I feel it's starting to fight, like I switch it through that way. Like especially in this position, like it's so easy to switch. Now if I went you and he starts like like it's not on it, but if I go you, like I'm really so you straight away start to panic. There. I just keep switching it in. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Whereas if I go here, <laughs> <laughs> if I go here, like bury your chin nice and tight, you can fight it pretty well, eh? And for me to like reload, and I gotta take this arm out, and then you can start fighting that. And I get my arm tight. If I go here, and then crack again, again, start fighting. Oh, so you don't even want it on the first time. So you don't even want it on the first time. No. You, you use the first two or three times to just edge that chin up. Just rough, rough. Yeah, it's yeah. not like I keep saying, you, I think you can probably get DQ'd for having a fucking jujitsu match. <laughs> yeah. You can't get DQ'd for an MMA. You, you're allowed to bridge the nose. Yeah. What do you think makes the rear naked choke such an effective submission for you personally? I think it's because um, my style of grappling 
it's an MMA base. Again, like if I if I went in a, in a pure jiu-jitsu competition against an elite level black belt, I'd, I'd probably get tapped straight away. Um, but my my style of grappling, I think my MMA gra or MMA grappling, my MMA grappling is elite. So I know how to mix my strikes in very well. Any little gap, like I'm not looking to just keep position and all. I'm looking to either sub you or open you up. And I think because of the pressure I put on top, eventually when I start to get space to let to let my elbows go, especially elbows, because no one wants to be elbowed. And if you, and if you know what you're doing well, you, you can cause a lot of damage. And I think because of that pressure, you, you know, again, it's pick your poison. Do you, do you want to be belly down or, or, or side down getting elbowed? Or are you going to try and, like, like I said, the Americans and the rest, if they give their back to try and push a leg, to try and scramble up. I think a lot of the time, because I drop so heavy from top, especially half guard or like, like the, the scissor guard that we did then, naturally, you're going to think, fuck this, let's get out of you. And, and they give their back. And I know the minute they turtle up, 90% of guys, like, what do they do against the cage? They turtle up and a lot of wrestlers will go, yeah and start knee riding. Whereas I'll jump one up straight in. And again, I'm comfortable here. Like I'm not going to enter the choke. I'll, I'll just smash from here and smash. And again, what, what, what do you want to do? do? Do you want to get pounded out or are you going to try and get out? And chances are you try and get out, you start trying to bridge, take away the next one.